In this uh, video, we are starting with the second chapter of our unit of biotechnology. The chapter is biotechnology and its applications. In the first chapter, we have uh, studied all the basic things about the biotechnological processes. And now we are on the applications. And we can classify these applications into various categories like in agriculture, in medicine and for other purposes also. So we will start with applications in medicine. Now when we say applications in medicines, there are many many things. First is genetically engineered insulin. Now before we talk about the details how this uh, insulin has been obtained using RDNA technology or genetic engineering, let us first understand the basic structure of normal insulin which is produced in our body. Insulin is produced in beta cells of islets of Langerhans. And two, it is synthesized as pro-insulin. Synthesized as pro-insulin. Pro-insulin means it is inactive form of insulin. Now let us talk about the structure. When we talk of pro-insulin, there are three polypeptide chains. A polypeptide chain, A, it is called A polypeptide chain. There is another polypeptide chain which is B polypeptide chain and connecting these two is one more which is called C polypeptide. So this is C polypeptide chain. So basically if we stretch this entire structure it is going to look like A polypeptide sorry A polypeptide then connecting to B is actually a C polypeptide which is also known as a linker polypeptide and then there is a beta polypeptide or a beta chain. So there are three polypeptide chains in pro-insulin and the job of this pro-insulin is or rather uh, the job of this C chain or this linker chain is to bring A and B closer so that between these sulfur containing amino acids of A and B, a disulfide bond can be formed. And as soon as this disulfide bond is formed, the role of C, that is linker polypeptide chain is complete. And once the bonds are formed, C chain is gone, then this is our active insulin. Now scientists thought that what is the need of the C when we need only A and B to synthesize the regular insulin. One more thing, A chain has 21 amino acids and B chain has 30, 30 amino acids. So from inactive to active. Now when we say there are three polypeptides which are synthesized, there are three genes. There is a gene for A, there is a gene for C and there is a gene for B. So what scientists have done, they have isolated gene for polypeptide A and gene for polypeptide B. So gene for A polypeptide and gene for B polypeptide. Both these genes were first allowed to transcribe. When they transcribe, we know the processes. First it is HNRNA. Let me just write it here in short. Gene when undergoes transcription, first formed is HNRNA. HNRNA has coding and non-coding parts both that is coding is exon non-coding is intron then it undergoes splicing using 
endonucleases and all these pieces are broken that is exons introns exons introns into individual parts then using a ligase we get all exons 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 connected then add a cap at the fifth prime and a tail at the third prime and this is our mRNA so mRNA has only the coding parts so what scientists have done in this case is they isolated this gene and synthesized mRNA first which has only the coding part and then using reverse transcriptase this was converted into a DNA strand. This DNA was known as cDNA. Now what was the need of doing this? For the splicing and ligation we need enzymes and these enzymes are eukaryotic enzymes because insulin is a eukaryotic protein whereas here the host cells which are used are E. coli that is prokaryotic cells. So these prokaryotic cells do not have enzymes for splicing and ligation. So to minimize that problem, straighten it. cDNA was taken and it was introduced into E. coli. So here when we say gene of A. polypeptide, it is actually cDNA of A, A gene. This cDNA was added into the plasmid. And this recombinant was introduced into E. coli. Same thing was performed for gene for B polypeptide. They obtained cDNA. This cDNA was incorporated into the plasmid of E. coli. And this recombinant was introduced into E. coli. So, a gene was introduced into different E. coli, B gene was introduced into different E. coli. That means these E. coli, they synthesized only A polypeptide chains and the other E. coli synthesized only B polypeptides. Now these two polypeptides were isolated from these E. coli. A polypeptide, B polypeptide, they were kept together in conditions where disulfide bonds can be formed and straight away insulin was synthesized. So this was the functional insulin which was obtained by genetic engineering. This insulin was called humulin. This entire thing was done by a pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly and Eli Lilly introduced this humulin the name of E L I L I L Y. Eli Lilly was the name of the pharmaceutical company. And Eli Lilly introduced this genetically engineered insulin in the market on July 5th, 1983. The date and year are very, very important when this genetically engineered insulin that is humulin was introduced into the market by LLA. The process is very simple. Isolate, they isolated genes for A and B. Obtained cDNA by this process so that this problem of having enzymes or not having enzymes in E. coli was overcome. cDNA was introduced into the plasmid to obtain RDNA. This RDNA was introduced into E. coli. So separate genes, A into different E. coli, B gene into different E. coli. So A chain was synthesized by E. coli separately and B chain separately. Both the chains were brought together and the disulfide bonds were uh, allowed to form here, giving all optimum conditions. This insulin was called humulin. The date when it was introduced was July 5th, the year was 1983. Now few scientists who contributed in this entire structure and basic structure of insulin that we know of. So let us talk about those few scientists. 
बैंटिंग एंड बेस्ट आइसोलेटेड इंसुलिन फ्रॉम डॉग स्पैन क्रियास सो दीज टू आर ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन एवर वी टॉप ऑफ इंसुलिन बैंटिंग एंड बेस्ट आइसोलेटेड इंसुलिन फ्रॉम dog's pancreas second important name of the scientist is frederick sanger who gave the amino acid sequence of insulin amino acid sequence of insulin this was given by frederick and sanger so these two scientists are very very important when we talk of the insulin later on two pharmaceutical companies eli lilly and ranbaxy they introduced an analog of human insulin it was called humolog first one genetically engineered insulin was called humulin named after uh, obtained from human insulin humulin and this was called humolog because this is an analog of human insulin and humolog has a shorter or less uh, period required before it gets activated so its reaction time is shorter as compared to humulin so this is how we have been successful in obtaining our insulin which is synthesized by e coli using our dna technology so this is the first application that we have talked of in medicine we will discuss the next one in the next video